uh, and I'm just taking a snapshot here of 400 gigi, you get this, this set of standards groups and MSAs all working on different aspects of it, and how do you bring it all together? So you, you actually have the IEEE that goes and defines 400 gigi. Uh, you have um, some follow-on projects. I actually chair this group. So this is all of the 50 gig base technologies, like 50, 100, uh, 200, all the different variants there. Um, you get things like the OAF, um, Arrow already mentioned it's doing the 400 gig, 100. Uh, you get new things coming along, follow-ons about multi-mode. Um, you generally get very good alignment in these kind of groups. Um, this is brand new, there's a new MSA forming on this as well, but you tend to get alignments. Once you get into the multi-source uh, multi agreements, that's where you maybe don't get so much industry alignments. Different companies trying to um, get different advantages for different reasons. Um, some of them, I actually chair this one, this 100 gig Lambda MSA. This is all of the 100 gig per lane optical PMDs. They're all being defined. Uh, the initial one was defined up here in the IEEE and all the follow-ons are being defined in the MSA because a group of us wanted to move quicker than the, the IEEE could. So we generally have good um, alignment here. Um, and then we get into the form factors and that's where things get very exciting and, and interesting. Um, so if you follow 400 gig at all, there's a, a big kind of contention between the QSFP double density MSA, which is a, a form factor, um, or the optical, or the optical, the octal SFP, OSFP MSA, which is another 400 gig. For all intents and purposes, they're little metal boxes that take 400 gig electrical in and 400 gig optical out. So from that level, they both work, everything's fine. Um, I chair this MSA, so I'm, I'm, I'm very biased. Everything I say will be, will be colored, but um, it, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve and, and do, and I'll talk more about this because it is actually quite important. Um, and then there's follow-ons like the SFP double density. Um, there are groups like Kobo, you may have heard of, that's a consortium of, of onboard optics, and that's the first attempt of the industry to move away from pluggable optics and move the optics deeper into the board, and there's reasons why you wanna go do that and there's reasons why you don't wanna go do that. Um, so why does all this form factor stuff matter? Um, it really matters because everything hinges off that. When we build our system, it hinges off what that is, how we place it there, how we cool it. Um, it gives us the, uh, the, the densities. If everyone uses the same form factor, then we get economies of scale, everything is cheaper. Um, depending on whether you're using a known form factor versus a, a new one, you, you get this time to market advantage because we all know how to build it versus it's something new and, and some discovery mode that we're in there. And then as, if we are reusing topologies, like if we continue continuing to doing the same port counts, it allows um, users of the equipment to, to um, just basically step their uh, networks up in speed without having to re-architect. So picking this form factor is, is very important and, and this is why there's so much kind of tension in the system right now. So, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this QSFP double density. I think everyone's probably familiar with the QSFP. It's, it's, it's like the workhorse for the industry. Um, this is a backwards compatible solution uh, allowing us to get up to the, to the next speeds. Um, whereas uh, the OSFP is, is a new form factor. It has a bunch of technical advantages against the limitations here, um, which come by trying to be backwards compatible. As long as we, you know, we believe that as long as we can solve these limitations, you don't need to go in and create new ground and, and do something there. Generally, I think the industry has settled down now. This, this has been a big fight for two years in the industry right now. It has kind of settled down at the big optical conference in March. Um, it kind of happened there, a lot of um, debate about it. And, and we're seeing reports like this where it's saying, you know, it's settled, right? So I'm gonna spend more time talking about the double density, partly because I'm biased, but partly because I think that's where the industry's going. Um, so one of the things we talked about with 400 gig is, um, you know, it, it's based on eight lanes of, of 50 gig. Um, everything before that was always based on four lanes. So all our form factors were optimized for four lanes. How do we make them so they're optimized for eight electrical lanes? Um, and, and it's really just hinged down into this bit here where the, we make the connector a little bit longer and, and we've just put an extra row of contacts on it so that we just double it. Um, we got a lot of support, you know, 60 companies in the industry are working on this. It supports the 400 gig uh, electrical interface. Um, it supports the same density, so if we have a 32 port um, switch supporting 100 gig QSFP, we can do 32 ports of 400 gig QSFP double density. 
Uh, and it's that backwards compatibility which is so important. Um, you can take, um, uh, it's not a great, it's just a bit of a blow up here. So this is a double density showing the two contacts. And what this is showing here is, is in gray is, is a connector that's sitting on, on the board of the equipment. You can go plug a QSFP into that and that card edge will just go in deep enough for the first row of contacts to, to engage. Um, if you go with your double density, it's got the longest one and the two um, sets of contacts, it goes deeper into that connector and so you get the extra row of contacts. So this is, you can have a system today um, built around QSFP double density, you can go plug 100 gig optics into that um, and it will work. This backwards compatibility is, is uh, in our opinion, um, extremely important. Um, and it just lowers all the risks, all the technology transition risks that are going on. So as I said, there's a lot of industry um, traction or, uh, around that right now. Um, but what we talked about right at the beginning, I said, well, why, why are we spending so much time talking about optics? It's all about getting the cost down. We're, we're trying to keep up with these technology transitions, but the, there's a barrier to this transition because of the cost. Cost of the silicon is, is just going down. We know how to do that. Moore's Law, it's great things. This gets harder and harder um, to do to keep up. So what do we need to do to go do that? You know, we look at what are the critical success factors, what makes it so we can get that technology cheap. Um, obviously, backwards compatibility we think is very, very important. Uh, we think we've got to get the cost down, and that's really about the volume. So if we can get the whole industry all doing the same thing, volume goes up, cost goes down, we, we all win. And then, you know, why, why would people go do this? Uh, you, exactly what I was just talking about. If, if, it's, if it's consistent with what we did before, allows you to protect your investment, you're going to go see that volume, and that's going to bring the cost down. Um, so if, if you follow optics modules, there's, there's a thousand. I'll, I'll just flash the next slide. There's a thousand form factors out there. Um, sorry, I'm jumping around. There's a thousand form factors out there. Typically, they, they start big and they go small, right? And every time you go do this, we have to go spend a lot of money building the next one and the next one and the next one, right? The reason we do this is, is we'll start out with, let's use SFP going from one gig to 10 gig. We started out with SFP and we couldn't fit it. We couldn't fit 10 gig going from one gig to 10 gig. We couldn't fit it in the same form factor right away. So we build something bigger, then we get smaller, then we get smaller, and finally we get back to the same form factor. Right? And there's a bunch of different things going on when it happens, but we've seen this many times, right? With when we went from uh, 40 gig to 100 gig, same thing. We, we take this journey through the form factors and, and you end up back with the QSFP, you end up backwards compatible, but you've spent, as an industry, time and money going around this circle, right? And there's a reason for it, um, and it's a good reason. But you end up with charts like this. You end up with multiple form factors. Um, if you're a, a, a user, um, you may not be able to plug old versions into new. It doesn't affect any interoperability. You can, you can plug a CPAC, and on the other end of your link, you can put a CFP2 or you can put a QSFP28. That will work. It works at the optical level. It's just you can't reuse the modules into different equipment if, if it's not designed that way. Um, part of the reason that we were able to or the industry did these journeys around is is when you look at 10 gigabit Ethernet, when it was very first deployed, it was a big form factor. Um, by the time it got to the high volume one that everyone used, that took 10 years, right? So basically different markets, we talked about at the beginning, different markets adopting the technology. So a service provider would typically be adopting the highest speed first, and then once you get down to data center, 10 years later in this case, that's when everything came together. With, with 100 gig E, that took five years, and with 400 gig E, if you look at all the projections, it's gonna happen at the same time. The, the data centers are looking to deploy 400 gig E at the same time the service provider are gonna look to deploy it. So we don't really have time to do that, that journey that goes around anymore. So, it's, it's helpful to understand why we did that. Um, typically what happens is you, you need to do the longer reach stuff, you need to do, it's the lower volume, um, lower system density, so it, it can afford to be bigger because what Errol was talking about, you're really trying to optimize that end-to-end -end, um, cost reduction. And then as technology matures, you, you can get a bit smaller, you, your, your system densities are getting bigger. Um, we'll ignore that, um, but you know, finally you get to the point where you're in high volume, you've got all the reaches in a single form factor, everyone can use it, economies of scale kick in, and, and 
it's off to the races, right? And this is where you want to be. You want to figure out how to get there as quickly as possible. And this is what the challenge is with 400 giggy in this form factor war that we've been talking about is can you do this in a single form factor or not, right? Um, so how do you go do that? Um, getting 400 gig optics into any kind of pluggable, it's all about cooling. We can figure out how to integrate the things we were talking about, silicon tonics and, and getting the lane count down. We have to do all of those things to fit all those components, fewer components in there. And then you got to figure out how to go cool this thing because uh, typically we talk about pluggable optics in the three and a half to five watts. We're, we're talking about 15 watts now. So that's one of the key issues. Um, getting all the technology into that package is hard, especially for that long haul. So everything Errol was just talking about, all these coherent DSPs, we now are at 400 gig are able to go and fit that in the same module day one, right? So the, the Moore's law, you know, the, the seven nanometer technology, we can get all that in that small little DSP that he was showing will fit inside that 400 gig pluggable module right at the beginning. So we get that copper technology all the way to long haul technology all fits in there day one. Um, and that, that just kind of changes everything. This is just saying exactly the same thing. Um, so we are seeing now with this QSFP DD, and this DD double density concept has taken over in, in, in the SFP module as well. Same reasons can we get higher speed through it? Can we double the number of electrical interfaces? So we'll see this continual um, convergence back to the two families, the SFP and the, and the QSFP families. And that's how we get some of the economies of scale going on. Um, are there technology risks in doing this? Absolutely. This is two years ago. This was. Um, my biggest concern in, in the development. Can we cool these things and can we actually figure out how to get the um, high speed electrical signals in and out of that connector? Both of those are, are, are not issues anymore. I don't want to go into too much detail here. Uh, necessary to say, you know, we, we don't want the optics to heat up too much because optics doesn't like getting hot. So we have a limit. Um, we're seeing now that we can cool up to 15 watt modules. Um, you know, way, way, way below the limit. And depending on which kind of um, chassis you put it in, if you put it in a fixed, like a 1RU chassis, um, he's up to there. If you put it in a modular chassis, we have line cards, you have a lot bigger fans, um, it's much better. So this is like two years of frantic engineering to try to figure this out. It's, it's, it's good, we're, we're very comfortable with that. Same thing with signal integrity. If you, that complex um, connector that I was showing you in a previous slide where you got these two rows, if you're a signal integrity engineer, you know, worrying about the quality of the electrical signal, this gives you a bit of heartburn. Um, OSFP is much more traditional, but you have, to, you have to put them much closer together now because you have more of them. Um, the, the pitch between them is closer. So you have crosstalk for this. You have crosstalk in a different direction there. It, it works out that everything, everything works out well. Right? There are no issues with 400 gig. We're, we've got lots of demonstrations of it. Um, and, and typically, this is what we see as an industry. Um, the connectors that we build, and this is what I was talking about earlier, where we do these big surges steps, we have to figure out all the connectors, we have to make sure everything works. And so when you look at the SFP family or you look at the QSFP family, they started out supporting two and a half gigabit NRZ electrical signals. And, and when 10 gig came along, they, they got improved, and they got improved, they got improved, and we're up here now, and everything, everything's still working, right? It's a lot of engineering work a lot of improvement, a lot of how you manufacture these connectors to keep the crosstalk down and the, and the signal integrity good. Um, and there's a lot of work right now on how to go do 800 gig um, using 100 gigabit per second signaling through that connector. So the technology has, has got out of the way. Um, we don't have any issues. We're seeing that all of this is coming together. And so we're seeing a big adoption of, of this. 